welcome once again back to FCBC Youth, Youth Service. Yeah, it's so good to see so many of you back. Okay, back from your holidays, back at service here. Okay, so how's school been for all of you? If it's good, give me a thumbs up. I see, I really do see thumbs up, okay. And yeah, for me and Pastor Kwang Han, it's a new season. Okay, because we have another one of um, our boy, okay, Jaira, our second boy, entering to primary school. Okay, and uh, it's, it's very exciting. He's been very excited since last year. I remember um, on his first day of school this year, he actually woke up very frequently, you know, 5 a.m., he knocked on the door and said, what's the time now? Uh? Is, it, is it time to go to school? He said, hey, no, not yet, go and sleep. 6 a.m., he woke up again, is it time to go to school? So he's really very excited. Okay, and I hope that you too, you are very excited about school, yes? Turn to each other and say, let's be excited about the school term. Okay, and since this is your first week of school, why don't we take some time, all right? Share the person beside you. What was one thing that you looked forward to when you went back to school? Just that one thing, okay, that you look forward to when you return back to school. Okay, quickly tell the person beside you. I wanted to ask y'all, but I realize y'all don't go back to school anymore. <laughs> Anyone? Any students? No, yeah. What do you look forward to when you go back to work? Claire? <laughs> actually, yes. actually I do, I go to school. La. I see, I'm still in university now. I think I look forward to meeting new people. Yeah, it's quite exciting to meet new people at my age. I see. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. How about Pastor? <laughs> like after a long holiday, when you go back to work, what do you look forward to? Oh, uh, meeting people again. Okay. Meeting people. So it's all about people. Yes. Abby? Same, colleagues. Same, all your yes. kawans here, all your friends. Okay, what about you? Okay, if the thing that you look forward to is meeting people just like most of them here, wave at me, meeting your new friends again, or old friends, wave at me. <laughs> if it's the food in the canteen, wave at me. It's your teachers, wave at me. It's the academic you love studying, wave at me. Oh, <laughs> boo. <laughs> okay, anyway, regardless of how your first week at school has been, you know something? We are right now back in the house of God. Okay, and back at home, you can be yourself. Okay, you can relax, you can chill. Okay, I just want to encourage all of us, you know, even as we enter into a time of worship to the Lord. Are you excited to worship God? Are you excited to worship God? Yeah. Then could you stand to your feet and say, we are home here to worship God. And make your way up to the front and let's just worship the Lord. Uh, come, yes. yes, just come. All right, come on, let's put our hands together once again and just uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Yeah. It's no performance, Lord. I pray it's worship. Empty words I can't afford. I'm not chasing feelings, that's not why I'm singing. sing with everything if I sing for you my king
sing with everything if I sing for you my king Thank you, Jesus. There's no 
burning like you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Can invite us to just lift up our hands to the Lord right now, all across this place. Father, with uplifted hands, we come before you and we want to thank you, Lord, for this brand new year. And we come before you to thank you for your goodness in each one of our lives, to know that, God, you want the very best of each one of us. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's come before the Lord and just respond to the Lord and to just give Him praise and give Him all our worship. Thank you, Lord.
Break up to 
shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face even right now let's just fix our eyes on the Lord well, we've come to a sacred time of this worship service where we partake of the Lord's Supper. It is a time that we remember the work of Jesus on the cross. It's not just another Holy Communion, but today, let us just look to Jesus. Let us just remember what He did for us on the cross. And at this moment, can I invite all of us to kneel down? And as we do so, let's prepare the elements in our hands. And if you are new, in our, our service, you can just sit down on the benches and, and just observe this sacred moment with us. And as you peel off the first layer, it reveals the bread which represents the body of Christ which was broken for us. And as you peel off the second layer, it reveals the cup which represents the blood of Jesus which was shed for us. And even before we partake of the elements, let's just take this time right now in a moment of silence to just come into the presence of the Lord, into His inner courts, and just allow even the Holy Spirit to come and examine our hearts if there is anything that we know is standing in the way of us I'm drawing close to His presence let's just lay it at the foot of the cross and for some of us as we enter into His presence I just sense that the Lord wants you to remember His love for you His love that's unconditional Just come right now into His presence. Thank you, Lord. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we partake of the bread together? Thank you, Jesus, you know, for your body that was broken for us and because of your stripes that have been inflicted on your body. We know that we can be healed by your stripes. And right now, I just pray for all my brothers and sisters, Lord, um, that they will receive even the power of healing over them, that every physical illnesses, every emotional sickness that they feel within, every mental, mental, mental conditions that they may have, today I just release the healing power of the Lord upon them that comes from the blood of Jesus. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Church, let's partake of the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for your blood that was shed for us, so our sins can be forgiven. Lord, we know that today we are made righteous not by our own strength, our own might, but we are made righteous because through, Lord, your blood, Lord, there is forgiveness. So, Lord, I just declare over your sons and daughters here, let there be a freedom in their spirit as they recognize that in you, Lord, we are made righteous. We thank you, Lord, that because of your work on the cross, we can have victory. We are victorious. And Lord, we thank you. We receive this victory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us rise up to our feet and just praise the Lord. 
Lift up our voices to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Come on, let's lift up praise unto the Lord in this place. Lord, we praise Your name. We praise you, Lord. Amen. We play, praise you, Lord, and we know that, Lord, everything that has breath, Lord, we should praise you. We can praise you, and we will praise you because you are good God and you are faithful God. So, Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord, on the cross, even right now, and in the days ahead, that you will always be faithful and you are never ever changing. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Everybody, say Amen. Come on, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And as you return back to your seats, turn to each other and say, let's praise the Lord in our lives. Well, it's really nice to see this auditorium packed once again. I guess in December, a lot of you must have been travelling. Okay, so we really don't see all of you in full attendance here. So welcome back to the house of God. Well, right now, it's, it's time to prepare our hearts to give to the Lord our tithes and offerings. Okay, and you can give online at this uh, website, lcbc.org.sg slash offering. This link is available at all times, so you can log on to the link to give any time during the week. Okay, but otherwise, right now, you can scan either of the pay now QR code shown. Okay, um, the red box on the left is for our regular tithes and offerings. Thank you. And the blue box on the right is for our missions faith pledges. Okay, and missions faith pledges, just to share with all of us, is over and above the general offering. is used for the overarching purpose of missions, humanitarian and social initiatives for local and overseas to promote the gospel of God. I can hear that you're very excited to give unto the Lord. Okay, so make sure that um, when you scan this code, you're using your bank mobiles app and not your regular QR code scanner. Okay, so you're ready to give to the Lord? Yes, come, let's just commit this, this um, tithes and offering to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you that, uh, yes, that we are back in school. Because we are back in school, we have allowance. We can give to you part of our allowance as our tithes and offerings. We thank you. That is such a joy to be able to give. Even on this Holy Communion weekend, we remember that you have given so much to us. You gave your one and only Son to us because you love us. So today, we want to give back to you joyfully, cheerfully with all that we have. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Alright. And today, I just have one announcement. Okay, um, Chinese New Year is coming up. Okay, it's really early this year, right? We just crossed into the new year and now we have a second chance to celebrate Chinese New Year. Okay, if uh, you have not started on your new year resolution, never mind. You can have another new beginning <laughs> in Chinese New Year. Okay, second chance. Uh. Okay, so Chinese New Year 2023 updates. Okay, just a heads up. Remember, okay, remember there'll be no live or on-site services on Chinese New Year weekend, which is the 21st and 22nd January. Okay, but in, uh, instead, I'm um, Hokkien. Bilingual services will be pre-recorded and made available to us on YouTube. Okay, so for, so for, for all of us, let us, let's also just attend uh, the bilingual service recording because I believe that uh, our, our pastor that we end has a special word even for all of us young people. Okay, and during this time, our church office will also be closed. We hope that you have a great time 
spend your family doing this festive season. And that's all for today. Are you ready for the Word of God? Are you ready for the Word of God? If you're you are ready, could you make some noise? Woo! Woo! Okay, let's welcome Pastor Kwang Han as he brings us the Word of God. Hi, Pastor Kwang Han. Hey, can you all do me a favor? I'm going to say this and I want you all to, to respond back to me, okay? Good morning, class. Mr. Ong. Okay, one more time. Good morning, class. Wow, oh, it's been a long time since uh, people call me Mr. Ong, uh, okay? And uh, yeah, I was Mr. Ong. And if you know, when I was, in sec uh, when I was a teacher back in uh, one of the schools, um, I'm known as David Ong. So nobody knows my Chinese name other than people in the church, okay? So you are privileged. So thanks uh, for calling Mr. Ong. Well, welcome back to the first day of uh, youth service, um, the first youth service of 2023. And I remember the last time I saw all of you was last year, okay? And it was um, really a long time, right? Last year, you know. I think it's been a year. I hope you had a great start to the first week of school. And just last weekend, I preached a message as we, as we go into 2023. What was the title of the message? What's the title of the message? Happy New Year. Can you just turn to the people around you and say one more time, Happy New Year. And the message I preached from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. And I think I should remind all of you this passage again. Not that I have already obtained all this or I have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which, of which Christ Jesus took hold of me, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I, I remember in that message, I shared with you three resolutions to make as we enter the new year. And the first resolution that we need to make is this, we need to resolve to press on. We need to press on and to move forward in this journey of faith in our lives. And the second re resolution that we need to make is to resolve to put the past behind. Because if we are always dwelling in the past, we will not be able to press on, we will not be able to move forward in our lives. But the most important thing as we, as we enter the new year, the third resolution that we need to make is that we must resolve to give our all to God. Because Apostle Paul says that we, he strains two words what is ahead? And every, as we enter the new year, we are nearer and nearer to the finishing line. And that is why when, it, when it's straining towards ahead, we must give our all to God this year. And in these first two weeks of 2023, before we go into the Chinese New Year, I'll be, I'll be uh, doing a two-part sermon series called Back to School. Okay? And today, my... my Sermon title is this, Expectations. Why don't you turn to the people around you and say expectations? You know, I believe as we begin a new school term for most of us, I know that perhaps some of us, among us, you could be feeling worthless, lousy, stupid, and maybe you're feeling that you are a failure. Because in your opinion, there are many expectations that's placed on you. And you just feel that you are unable to meet all the expectations. Well, I think the, all these expectations could come from yourself. It could come from the school, from the, your, your school culture. It could come from your family and friends, whether directly or indirectly. But maybe at this point in time, as I talk about this word expectation, you feel that you really cannot live up to all these expectations that you think that people have of you. And maybe for some of us, at this point in time, you feel that you, your parents have unrealistic expectation of you in terms of your studies. And perhaps for some, some of us, when it comes to expectations in our lives, we feel the extreme pressure and the stress. And maybe some of us go to the extreme of even harming ourselves. Today, I want to tell you this. Your expectations more than anything else in life determine your reality. 
Your expectations shape how you view your life. They can change your life spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically, and you, we, you need to be extra careful about the expectations that you harbour as the wrong expectations may make your life unnecessarily difficult. And I believe for some of us here, wow, there's so many expectations that's placed on me. I have high expectations of myself. But maybe for some of you, you have low expectation. In fact, you may be expecting nothing in your life. And maybe you feel this way, you expect nothing because you will never be disappointed. In other words, some of us, we have this mentality that when we have low expectations in our lives, we have fewer disappointments. And that is why quite a number of us, a lot of us, I believe, we keep the expectations of our lives really low. We don't ask for anything. We don't expect anything. We don't presume anything. We don't dream about anything. We don't aim for something that high. We don't desire for something great in our lives. And some of us, we even tell ourselves, ah, yeah, I don't expect to live a great life. You know, our low expectations of our lives is holding us back from pursuing the life that God has intended for us. You know something? God is good. Everything He does is good and wonderful. Everything, God, everything that God gives and offers is greater than what the devil offers. So shouldn't our expectations come from God? God wants to do something amazing and wonderful in your life, but you have to be ready and expect it to happen. We must have expectations that God will move in our lives. We must have expectations that God will help us to fulfill our destiny in Him. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, in the ESV version, it says, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you. The word wait there, it has the meaning of expectation, to expect. Therefore, the Lord ex is expecting to be gracious to you. And therefore, He exhorts Himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for Him. Blessed are those who expect of Him. And God is looking and longing for someone who's waiting, who's expecting for Him to be good to them. You know, today God wants to be good to you. But you have to be expecting Him to move in your life. And today, the Lord has placed a word in my heart for all of you as we begin 2023. And this is the word that will birth in you an expectation of God's move in your life in this new year and for the rest of your year. You know something? Maybe as a young person, you feel there's a lot of expectations that's placed upon you. But, do you, but if all you desire is to expect God to move in your life, you have expectation that God will do something amazing in your life. I can tell you, all the expectation that you feel that is placed upon you won't be so great after all because you know that God is with you. You know the passage that I preached to all of us last week from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, right? You know the Apostle Paul, he describes our life to a race and the goal of this race is to win a prize, right? And I have shared that our, our life is, is a journey. We begin from this point, from the moment that we are born, to all the way to the end, where we meet the Lord face to face. That's the, that's the end point. That's the finishing line. And all of us, we're in this race. Okay, I want you to know this. Uh, if you have a personal relationship with God, you wouldn't be in a red race. Okay, This race is not a red race. This race is a journey of faith, where God is leading you. And in this race, in this Christian race, God is, God is, uh, change, is transforming us to become more and more like Him. And He's calling us to spiritual maturity and He wants us to know Him intimate, intimately and passionately. And you know, from, from this whole journey, from this point to that point, in this whole journey that we are moving towards, okay, God has a vision for your life. For every one of us, He puts upon you, each one of you, a dream for your own life, a purpose. He has different goals for each one of you. No, not everyone will have the same goal, but all of us have our unique individual goals and dreams that God has put upon our hearts. That 
every one of us, we have different purposes that God has for us, different assignments that God has of us. And in fact, some of us, maybe right now where you are, as you look, wow, I have so many years ahead. God, can you tell me 20, 30 years later, what am I supposed to do for you? What is the purpose that you have for me? What is the assignment that you have given to me? I want to know it now. But you know something was an interesting thing about God? is that God will reveal His purpose to you bit by bit. He will not show it to you immediately. Can you imagine? He show it to you immediately. Remember like last time I was a teacher, my whole life, I can tell you, I just want to be a teacher. I've been telling God, God, I just want to be a teacher my whole life. I want to be called Mr. Ong. You know why I want to be a Mr. Ong? Last time, 20 over years ago, there's this uh, uh, J- uh, Japanese drama called Great Teacher Ong, GTO, okay? Um, maybe the older folks will watch that. Uh, GTO, Great Teacher Ong. I want to be, I want to, okay, it's great teacher Onizuka. I want to be great teacher Ong. Okay, so that's me. So I want to be a teacher my whole life. Can you imagine God show me that 10 years, 20 years down the road that I'll be a pastor? Wow, I'll tell you, I'll be a sh- I wouldn't want to be a teacher. But in the whole journey of being a teacher, God has done something in my life. God is forming me to become more and more like Him. And, and I want you to know this. I have shared that earlier on. That as we, from this point to that point, remember I said, you will never be a straight line, right? Because why? Some of us will be going in circles, right? Circling around the mountain or the hill. I shared with you last week. We'll be going in circles. Well, and we will never be a straight line. But you know something? We'll be going through loops and circles, but I want you to know that God will not waste any of those experiences. Even if those circles that you're going around, you're wandering around, maybe you feel that it's, you will not be related to God's calling for your life. God is sovereign and He will weave them into His purpose for your life. And God is in control and He will perfect that which concerns you. Can I hear an amen to that? So in this journey, I want you to know that God has called you to something. He does have a plan for your life. And God's great goal, greatest goal for you is to pursue intimacy with Him in this whole journey. But however along this journey, we'll be distracted. But we need to be like the Apostle Paul. We need to stay focused. We, we need to stay focused on the goal, on the finishing line, on the prize that He has for us, heavenward in Christ Jesus. And today, if you want to fulfill your purposes in your life. You want to walk according to God's purposes and will in your life. You have to go after them with all your might. You have to expect God to move in your life and and especially if you want to be used by God for His glory, you need to fight for it. I want to turn, let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 16 to 19. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again. Extinguish, snuff out like a wick. Verse 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let's just close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, I just want to give thanks that Lord, that every one of us, we are in, different, in a different journey. And you have given to us, every one of us, a unique dream, a unique goal, a unique purpose, and unique assignment in our lives. But today, I want to declare that we want to look to you. We want you to speak to us that as we begin this new year. And I want to declare that indeed, Holy Spirit, that you will just soften the hearts of the people here. And then that indeed, we will respond to you. We respond to your great love for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, as I said earlier, we need to expect God to move in our lives. And today I want to share with you two things we can expect God to do in our lives. There are two things as we begin this new year. The first thing that we we can expect is this, that God is doing a new thing. Can you turn to the people around you and say, God is doing a new thing? You see, God's promise is for something new, something fresh. Especially if you live today, God has something new and something fresh for you. 
In verse 19, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? You look at the word, see. This is the most important word in this verse. Why? Because it's an invitation from God Himself. He's telling all of you, you must see that He is doing a new thing in your life. And the next, the next statement, He says, now it springs up. Now it springs up. What does that mean? It means that something is growing. Something new is growing in your life. And God wants you to see it. And God loves doing new things. God does new things. And especially for you right now, maybe as you look at your own life, it could be a wilderness. It could be a desert. You don't see, any, you don't see anything in front of you. You just feel that the, your future is, is just pure dark. You're, you're not going anywhere. But today, the Lord's invitation to you is this. He wants you to see. He wants you to open your eyes to see that He has something new that He wants to do in your life. But you know what? It's the criteria for us to see, to be able to see. Let's look at the verse, okay? That is in verse 18. There's a verse that's just before verse 19. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Remember one of the points I shared last week, the second point I shared. We need to put our past behind. If you want to press on and move forward in your life, you must put your past behind. And that's why the Apostle Paul put it as forgetting the past. And here it is the same. God calls us to forget the former things and to not dwell on the past. You see, instead of dwelling in the past, demanding that God will revive the glory days when you were satisfied and happy. Wow, it's so good, man, in the past. Instead of dwelling in the past that everything that has gone wrong, still eating grass, circling around the mountain, circling around the hill. You know, what must you do? You may, at this point in time, perhaps you must change the question that you ask God. You must ask instead for your eyes to be open to what He is doing. Today, we need to ask God, God, what is the something new that you want to do in my life this year? Open my eyes because I want to see. God, I, I want clarity. God, I want to be able to see because God, I know that you love doing new things. God, I know that you love to create new ways. And that is something that you must be praying for yourself this year. And the years on, ask God to open your eyes to see that He's doing something new. Can I hear an amen to that? You know, I have no interest. As I look at my past, I feel very happy, you know. I always have this, I always love to sing this J. Cho song, you know. You know what's that song? If you know, can I just shout it out? Hey, you Oh, you're other generation. I'm so sorry, yeah. You're the, not the J. Cho generation. I thought some of you go and watch J. Cho. That song, I like to go back to the past. You know, I, loved, I would love to tell you my story. I would love to show you all my past photographs, especially in, in FCBC, in this church, for the past 20 years. But you know something? As I look back to the past, I thank God for what He has done in my life. But what He is doing right now and what He is preparing me for is far more relevant because... I know that God is doing something new in my life. And God is doing something new in your life. Can I hear an amen to that? So God is inviting all of you to see. And that's why He has this question. Do you not perceive it? Why don't you close your eyes right now? Don't fall asleep. I'll just close your eyes, okay? Short one, only 30 seconds. Why don't you close your eyes right now? Why not in this moment, why don't you ask God, God, help me to see. I receive your invitation. Help me to be able to perceive that you're doing something new in my life.
Dear God, we receive this invitation to see. I want to declare over every single one of us that today open up our eyes to see that you're doing something new in our lives. And I declare that indeed in Jesus' name, that Lord, remove every veil. Remove, Lord, all the, the indifference that is in their lives, all that confusion is in their life. Grant them clarity to be able to see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. And you know something? If your past is going to call you, if the past is going to call you, okay, I'm, I'm not calling them. Uh, if the past is going to call you, you may be looking. Do you pick up the phone? If the past is going to call you, going to, are you going to pick up the phone? No, don't pick up the phone. Because if the past is going to call you, don't pick it up. Yes, you thank God for your past, but He has nothing new to say. But if God is going to call you, will you pick it up? Why? Because God has something to say to you, has something new to say to you. Because it's something, He's doing something new in your life and He wants to reveal new things this year. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a louder amen to that? So don't pick up the call of the past, but pick up the call from God. So what is the first thing that we must expect God to do in our life as we enter this year? Number one, we must expect that God is doing a new thing. And this leads me to the second point that I want to share today. And that is this. We must expect that God is preparing us for something, for greater things. Can you turn to people around you and say, God is preparing us for greater things. Let's come back to verse 16 and 17 of Isaiah chapter 43. It says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a week. If you read in verse 16 to 17, you know, Israel was told to look back to the past by remembering the great things that God did for them at the Red Sea. But however, very interesting, right? You look at verse 18. They were told to not, to not remember the former things, to not consider the things of the old. But this shows us that there is a sense in which we must remember the past in terms of God's great work. That's why I was saying earlier on that when we look back, hey, I thank God for God's great work in my life, right? And, and as we look to God's new thing in our life, God is doing a new thing in our life, I want you to know this, that God has greater things in store for us. Can I hear an amen to that? You see, when God is doing a new thing in, in your life, He is preparing you for greater things in your life. And especially when God is doing something new in your life, it requires you to step into the unknown. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. It may be unpleasant. But you must embrace that when God is doing something new in your life, He's preparing you every step of the way for greater things ahead. Otherwise, we'll miss out on all the good things that God wants to do, on all the greater things that God wants to do in us and through us. Can I hear an amen to that? You, see, you know, in this world, there are three types of people that lives this whole journey of life. Three kinds of people, okay? The first, the first type of people is those who look to the past. Always look to the past. Always wait out Kochi, okay? Always looking back at the good things and the bad things in, our, in, the, in their lives. That's, that's the first uh, that is the first type of people. The second type of people are those people who live for today because they think that they will die tomorrow. And these people, they live day to day, okay, with, without any plan or goals in their lives. They are just satisfied with good food and having fun on weekends. And in fact, many of the people I know live this way. And that is the third type of people. And I, I want every one of us be, to be living in that way. And these are the people who are future-minded. 
These are the people who are future-minded. What do I mean by future-minded? Future-minded people are people who look towards the future. They don't care about their past. They don't just look at the present. They look towards the future. Why? Why, as believers, we must be future-minded? Because God has greater things in store for us. He, if you know Jesus in your life, if you are a disciple of Christ, you know that God has... You know that God has a goal for you. You know that God has great, great purpose in your life. You know that God has great dreams for you. And you, as a believer, if you're future-minded, you expect God to do great things in your life. That is why in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, if you look at what Apostle Paul says, he is always saying what? Straining towards what is ahead. And he press on towards the goal. He pressed on and he strained to words. And that is how the Apostle Paul, he obtains his goal. He strained to words. He pressed on. You know what does this two word? It actually is or not. They are all action words. It means that there is a lot of effort on his part. He, he puts in a lot of effort to reach his goal. And that's why for you and me, we cannot be lepa, you know. We cannot be ROC. Relax one corner. We must be putting in effort because God has a purpose for your life. And that is why we must put in a lot of effort. We must intentionally work towards it. It's not a walk by the park, you know. You see, God is a God who sets goals. And He, and he expects that you set them too if you want to fulfill the purposes that God has for you. Let me ask of you a question, which I have la asked last weekend. How many of you, you have done up your New Year resolution? Put up your hands. One, two, three. Put up your hands. Ah. Now, there's more people putting up your hands. Can you put, up, put, put, it, put them down? Okay? You see, when I talk about setting New Year resolutions, it's all about setting goals for the year. Have you set goals for yourself as you seek God for this year? In your personal life? In your spiritual life? In your studies? In your school? In your family? Have you done that? I want to show you what I put up last week. Remember what I put up last week? One, two, three, if you remember. Leaders, you all remember, right? You can wave at me, huh? if you all remember. What is that one, two, three? Number one. One key lesson that you have learned in 2022 that you know that God has taught you. I think it's important to reflect upon the year, at least one statement, so that when you look at 2022, you know what, what, I mean, what is one thing that summarized that year for you. And, number, and two, two key, two things to improve on in 2023. It's important. Because if you want to become more and more like Christ in your life, you need to be intentional in, work, in working on your character. And of course, Number three, three goals to press on towards in 2023. I think this is important. And I want to encourage all of you once again to really look at this again, all the youths here. And perhaps I think some of us, we have this, this interesting thinking, which, which I find that I, I, I do meet some people and they tell me this. I uh, setting goals huh, is unspiritual. Because uh, it shows a lack of trust. It's not right to plan. Instead, uh, people should wait for God to lead them. Some people will tell me that, you know, Ayah, don't set goals. La. It's like, I'm not trusting God, you know. Hey, but you know something? Let me tell you this. Setting goals is a form of spiritual discipline as a believer. Setting goals is a form of spiritual discipline. You know why? Goals will stretch you and help you to become all that God wants you to be. Setting goals will give a destination for your vision and dreams. Setting goals is in fact the first step to turn the invisible into, into the visible. Setting goals and consulting God shows that you trust Him and believe that He's able to lead you while you are moving forward. You see, if we don't make plans, if we don't set goals, there's no way that God can direct us towards our goal. And on the other hand, Whereas some of us here, we are not setting goals because we have a mindset that it says, if I fail, it means I didn't have what it takes 
and therefore I'm a failure. Please, don't ever think that way. See, we must have a growth mindset. Can you turn to the people around you and say growth mindset? Which means that you must view your potential as something that is constantly expanding as you learn and grow for both achievements and your mistakes. Doesn't mean that you fail to reach your goal, you are a failure. It is the process where God is teaching you and leading you and, and showing you how to grow as a person. Setting goals is exciting, you know. Because for me, even if I fail to reach it, I will learn from it and I'll be better next time. And that is why I want to encourage every one of you here in the youth service to set goals for this year. In fact, every single year in the different areas of your lives. Be it spiritual, family, social, physical, or even especially in your studies. Next week, I will talk to you about your studies. You want to score A, come and listen to me. And not say A, lah, okay? at least pass. Lah. <laughs> hey, I want to encourage all of you to really seriously set goals for your lives. Especially the one, two, three that have set it up for all of you. I want you to share with your leaders. You know why? I want you to share with your leaders. Because setting goals allows for discipleship to take place. Allows mentoring to take place. Or else I can tell you, huh? then you meet your leader for what? There's no way your leader can guide you. With, there's no way that he or she can be intentional to help you grow in your life. I believe your leaders will walk through the journey with you, pray alongside you, challenge you to become, man, to become the man and woman that God wants you to be. Can I hear, man, hear an amen from all the leaders? A louder. Uh, can I hear an amen from all the youths as louder than the leaders? Uh, I think... Le Okay, okay, let's try again. Can I hear an amen from all the youth leaders? Yeah. Can I hear an amen from all the youths? Yeah. Uh, okay, can, on pass, sweet. We try again, uh, the next one. <laughs> you know, to be honest, if you don't set goals for your life, you can't expect God to move this year. You know why? Because no one will challenge you to take action. And eventually coming to cell and church, I can tell you, you'll find that there's no meaning to it. Because there's no one to challenge you in your spiritual life. There's no one to challenge you in the other areas of your life. And you see, the real value of setting goals is not the recognition or reward. It is the person we become. Remember, it is the person that we become by finding the discipline, the courage and commitment to achieve them. And the moment you see your yearly goals fulfilled, or even near fulfillment, you begin to realize that our God is a great God and He wants to do greater things in your life. Can I hear an amen to that? So how many of you, you want God to prepare you for greater things ahead? Can, I, can you put up your hands? All right. And how many of you, you will set goals for your life this year so that you know your leaders can walk through with you can you put up your hands all right awesome that's great i'm not sure about you we need to expect god to do greater things in our lives yes we can look to the past yes god has done great things but god is doing greater things but god is also preparing you in this journey ahead so what are the two things that we can expect God to do in our lives? Number one, what's number one? God is doing a, God is doing a new thing. God loves to do new things in your life. And God is inviting you to see. And I pray that God will give you the clarity and the ability to be able to see the new thing that He's doing in your life. And what's the number two? Number two thing? That God is preparing us for greater things. Please, in this whole journey in your life, God is preparing you, but you must be intentional in growing and be looking towards what God has in store for you, the greater things that is ahead. 
So as I end of this message, I thought that I want to invite someone up to come and share his testimony. Okay? His name is Vernon Chow. Okay, you can just put a picture of him. This is uh, him. 10 years ago, he came into my cell group and he's still in my cell group now. I think 10 years ago when I, I remember he's... I have not seen him in church. Like, I know that he grew up in church. Uh, I think since... How long have you been in church? Uh? Since... Huh? Since G-Kids times, he has been in church already. And I remember the time when I tried to engage him because he's new to me. Wow, he's in university, very hard to get him. He's always in meetings, very engaged in his hall. Wow, very hard to get him. And I remember he can tell me he can have meetings for 14 hours. Eh. Oh, that's what kind of CCA is that? 14 hours. And I was thinking, wow, God, this guy is very committed. I pray that he will be committed to, to the kingdom of God. Okay? And of course, I think through that journey, he's, he's a very committed person to, to, to God. Can I just invite him to come and share his testimony with all of you? In this whole journey, growing up in this church, let him share. All right, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, my name is Vernon. I'm 31 this year. Right, from Pastor Kong and Melissa team. And you know, I got married last year. Um, it's the start of school year. Thank you, thank you, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's the start of school year and some schools uh, are some are new to school, some are preparing for maybe your major exams. But today I'd like to share with you my education journey as a student when I was your age. And I hope that you know you can take away something from it. As a little child, you know, I play with Legos, right? I use small blocks and I create bigger things. So in primary school, I got exposed to the world of like Lego Mindstorm, which is actually like where you build like robots to, to solve missions. La. And that led me to compete throughout my primary school and secondary school days, right? And the idea of creating something that can perform tasks for humans just excites me. La. I knew that I wanted to do that growing up. And that led me to pursue math and science, you know, and also to at least work towards doing something um, in robotics, right? However, the journey right, was nothing but straight. And the journey was a testing of my faith. La. Not just once or twice, but all the way. Right? In, upper, in upper secondary school, right, I, had, I had really bad grades. Uh, I think now the counting is a bit different, but the start of my... Uh, don't, don't, don't compare, okay? Everyone got different standards. But like, I had 40 points, la, okay? So I don't know what's the counting now, but in the past, right, 20 points is for JC. Maybe 30 something is for poly, right? 40 points, right? Um, yeah. And actually, my, my teacher told my, my parents, I said, your son continue, right? I don't know if he can even go to IT. Yeah. And of course, that was a very worrying thing for a parent to go through. So I really had to come up a plan for myself to drag my grades up. La. And I remember after putting so much, right? Even my prelim, I had 26. So in a way, I'm not like meeting below 20. But I remember just before I was getting my results, I just had a moment with God and I said, the Lord, I've, I did my best, you know, you're a God of, of great things and I just commit my results to you, la, you know. So in the end, I got 13 points, right? A marked improvement. Of course, it took a lot of effort and definitely God played a role in this. Yeah. Not bad, la. I know I'm pretty sure some of you are straight A students here. Yeah. So I thought that maybe this is the end, right? Oh, but no, this is the start. <laughs> I go to A-levels, it was not easy. I didn't even, I only barely promote to J2. And I was in army, right? Bota, go to school, get my results. I actually fell right below the local university entry point. Yeah, and so I was thinking, oh no, can I, can I, can I get in? So in army, luckily, right, you can apply to university three times. Right, for, for females, you have to apply, and you get it. If you don't, you consider. But for me, I, to, I can apply three times now. Um, yeah, so I, I, had, I had to contemplate a lot of options. Should I retake A-level? Should I go private school? Obviously, the option. Actually, at that point of time, right, SIT didn't, I don't think it existed. So that was not an option for me. Yeah, and my parents, they were very worried. They drove me all the way to the NTU office to ask. They, drove me, they went to the MP to ask for a letter to help me to get in. Of course, um, yeah, it's not that easy. La. And I guess for me, because I was just aiming at this certain goal, 
And when and with that door being closed, I also felt lost. I, I didn't know if this was the right path for me, right? Right path, like this interest that God has even placed in my heart. And so in my second application, I actually got into applied physics, which is another course, which is not the course that I wanted. The course I wanted is mechanical engineering. And I thought of choosing that because it's the closest in, in a way to, to doing robotics. Uh. Yeah, and only on my third attempt, I actually got into a place. Uh, they call it common engineering. So it's a more general one. And, and after an appeal, right, I actually got all the way into mechanical engineering. So from that two, three years journey, I didn't even know if I could get into university and getting to the, the course of my choice, right? Um, that was really like a long test of, of faith as well. Uh. And actually that, those were the days um, that I started serving as a youth leader. All the way back when youth service was at Expo. I don't know how many of you are here. This is a very old photo, but yeah, some of my guys, they are like all working adult now. Sorry? Uh, actually, some of them are some of the teens leader, but their members moved to uh, adult service, yeah. So, I adopted the desires that I had from God, you know, doing robotics, right? And despite studying hard, it was not like very straightforward for me, right? I always had to struggle, I always had to do um, a lot, and I also doubt my own abilities. But I think as I continue to serve, I just live simply, obediently, and faithfully to God. Lah. And actually, I spend, as I spend time to serve, right, God honored my dreams. Because, um, yeah, He honored my dreams exceedingly, abundantly more than what he, I could ask or imagine, right? And one thing led to another, university, you know, I also had opportunities to, to join, um, yeah, uh, doing like things related to robotics. Um, and, and did my final year project. And I managed to score a good grade, A. But actually, because in university, I also struggled. Um, this is like one of the rare A's that I had. Like, I only had a few. Um, so I actually had to retake a failed module because I, I didn't pass. So I couldn't actually graduate on time. But miraculously, a week later, the school actually offered us to retake um, the exams during the holidays. So that allowed me to actually take the exams, which I never heard before when I was in university, and then allowed me to, to graduate on time. And then I realized actually all this period, right, that God has never shortchanged me. I did not actually complete an extra year. I did not have to go to a longer path. And yeah, I was serving not just as a leader throughout university, but I was also active actually in the, in the past, like planning for youth um, events, youth camps in the past. Yeah, and and there was a lot, a lot of different struggles. Even for my internship, um, because of some administrative issue, I had to retake it. And yeah, and, and all, every, at every point of time, I really had to like question and then just struggle like, oh, why is it that I, I have to go through this? I didn't, I didn't really understand it. But back in, when I was very down, you know, I cried to God many times. You know, what, what was his dream for me? Was it all for nothing that he, he placed in my heart, you know, my hopes, my dreams, my struggles? Um, but there are more details and setbacks which I probably have one time, won't have time to, to share. But it was always never a straight path. And in fact, I saw it, I thought it was like almost a pattern, right? That, that some of my friends might have it easy, but uh, it was not for me. But I surrendered myself to God lah, and I have, I have peace. Because, you know, like what Pastor Kwan shared, you know, everyone goes through a different journey. Some of y'all may, you know, may not even need to blink to score an A. Some of you may struggle. I'm pretty sure some of you are struggling. But um, to me, it's an indication that God is with me, la, this peace. And because I, if, with this peace, I know that even if something did not, did not turn out to what I want, that I know that God has made a way for me. And through coming back um, in my university, even though I, I failed a module, <laughs> I didn't complete my internship, I actually secured an internship with another company building robotic systems. And so I managed to get a job working there. So ultimately, I actually, you know, um, yeah, I was actually um, managed to get a job in, in robotics. Um, let me see. Yeah. And so I think God has made beautiful in his time. For me, as I, as I lay out the timeline of everything that's happened, but you know what? That was not the end. <laughs> About a year into the company, right? They performed like a retrenchment exercise. So they had to lay off 10% of the people. 
So being a fresh graduate, you can imagine how it feels like coming out of work, the first job. It was almost like a nightmare. It's like a stain in my career. And after after such a long journey, there's somewhere where I got it. But and I was definitely at that point of time, you know, I probably was very shaken and I broke down. So I asked, you know, if God is he playing a trick on me to bring me this far? But within that same week, I think my spirit changed. I went by went for service. But I felt the peace from the Lord, even in that hard moment. Uh. So I went for a haircut, I picked myself up, you know, I started to um, just apply for jobs. Uh. The long story short is that within the month that I got laid off, um, I actually had multiple job offers, all doing the thing that I wanted to do, uh, which is robotics. And so this was like another test and surrender to the Lord. And you can tell that like through all these different downtimes that I guess uh, my faith has been tested and, and hardened and strengthened. Uh. And I know that, you know, if one day I have to face something that's hard, yeah, my faith has really been hardened and, and strengthened all these times. Yeah, so I only have, you know, something to say that, that through the numerous setbacks and failures, right, all these years, God has never sought to change me. He never did and He never will. Same thing for all of you. You know, my life is in His hands. And now I trust Him with making good out of the setbacks or failures that come my way. Even to me sharing to you, this is His plans as well. And there's no true failure when I'm walking with Jesus. You might be walking through uncertainty, struggles or doubt right now, but know that God will fight for you. So plead with Him. He's not going to take away all the struggles. He won't make our problems magically go away, but He's going to mold you and guide you to a vessel of truth, of grace and of love. And one that is going to be faithful in the storm. And one day when you stand at the end of your journey and look back, you will see how much God has walked you through, how much He has carried you and showered you with His favour. So, thank you and God bless. Alright, can we just uh, encourage Him? <clears throat> Thanks, Vernon. You know, you know why I brought him to share his testimony? Because I know that he's, I mean, he grew up in the church uh, from G Kids all the way to right now as a working young adult. But why is it I want him to, sh sh to share his journey? It's because I want you to be able to see that for Vernon, he knows that God has placed in him a dream, a goal. That he knows since young, he knows that is within him, that is robotics. And throughout the whole journey of his life, that every time he meets up, meets an obstacle, he knows that deep in his heart, that God is preparing him for something greater. But each time he meets an obstacle, each time he meets a test, he knows that God is doing something new in his life so that he can be prepared for the something that is greater. And, and, that, and that is what I want all of you to receive today. It's going to be a long journey ahead. There'll be ups and downs, but you need to trust that God is leading you. So right now, can I just have all of us to stand up right now? We're going to a time of just responding to the Lord We must have expectation that God wants to move in our lives. We cannot be believers that just have no expectation. But today, God wants to move in your life. And there's a few of you that you need to respond today. I think the first, the first group of people is that you are pressured by expectations that's placed on you. If you know that that's you, there's a tremendous stress and pressure, why don't you come and respond to the Lord? And for some of you, God is inviting you to see the new thing that He wants to do in your life. Perhaps you have never really opened up your eyes to see. Maybe right now in your life, you have no aim, meaningless. You, 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 there is no passion or anything in your life. I'm not too sure what it is. But God wants to reveal to you His purpose for you, His dreams for you. 
And today you need to open your eyes to see. And maybe for some of us here, right now, you're, especially you're in a new school. You struggle, you struggle in that school. But why don't you op- ask God to open your eyes to see that it is, He's doing something new in your life. And for some of us, the other group of, of youth that need to respond is that you must be, we must be future-minded people. We must have a growth mindset. We must set goals in our lives. Especially right now, if you feel that your life is meaningless, purposeless, purposeless, there's nothing to aim for. Why don't you ask God, God, I don't want just to live for yesterday or for today. I want to live for, for the future, for the greater things that you have for me. And for some of us here, when I talk about setting goals, there's no excitement within you. Ah, Sienna. My parents have been asking me to set goals. My leaders have been asking me to set goals. You know why? Because some of you, you need to open up your eyes to see what God wants to grow in you. And perhaps for some of you, you don't want to set goals because you have given up on your dreams. There's nothing to look forward to. Or maybe there are people who say nasty things to you and say, ah yeah, you cannot make it. Uh. You want to be a musician? Oh, you don't even know how to play. You cannot even play. Uh. You tone deaf. Okay? But the Lord says to you, I have dreams for you. I want to birth dreams in you for every area of your life. So today, if you need to respond, why don't you respond to the Lord and surrender yourself to the Lord as we worship Him? is my reward and all of my devotion just come and respond and to the Lord nothing in this world that could ever satisfy through every trial my soul will sing set free Christ is in the for me Christ is in the for me everything I need is in you everything I need my only I just worship Jesus in this place joy of my salvation and this hope will never fail heaven is our home there are more leaders to come to the front and pray especially the storm, female leaders my soul will sing Jesus is here to God be the glory in Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in
returning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning. And declare that Christ is enough for us. Let's declare that everything that we need is in Him. Hallelujah. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, Christ is enough. all lift up our hands and for those who's being prayed for continue to be prayed for I just, just want to pray for you right now Father I want to declare right now in the name of Jesus as we go back to school as we go back to our workplace Lord we want to declare that we expect you to move in our lives and Lord when we declare that we have an expectation that you will move in our lives Lord we are declaring that Lord that our faith will arise because Lord this year you are doing something new. I pray that each one of us will be able to see clearly the something new that you're doing in our lives. Because when you're doing something new in our lives, Lord, you are preparing us for something greater. And I want to declare for every single one of us here, I declare that they will continue to pursue the dreams, the goals that you have placed upon their hearts. And I declare that indeed in the name of Jesus, that through this whole journey of faith and its journey of life, Lord, we know that, Lord, we will become more and more like You and we will know You intimate, intimately and passionately. So, Lord, I want to commit everyone to Your hands. Thank You, Lord, for moving in our hearts and I declare that indeed that we will always look forward to what You want to do in our lives. So, Lord, I want to commit ourselves into Your hands. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen, amen. Let's just step onto the Lord and thank Him for what He's going to do in our lives. Amen. So before you leave this place, I want to turn to people around you and say, God has something greater for you. See you next Saturday, same time here in TC for Youth Service. God bless you.